Uh, this is the next neural strategy. Uh, and this has a number of benefits. It can, re it can reduce fatigue. Uh, it can increase um, range of motion. It can reduce muscle tension. It can reduce pain. There's a number of benefits of massage. Um, it can even have an impact on your mood. It uh, generally relaxes the athlete. It can help remove the waste and increase the nutrient supply to muscles, which can lead to faster healing and recovery. It can also minimize fatigue. Um, it, it can also relax an athlete and help them to calm down and be able to sleep better, which is another important recovery strategy. As I said, it reduces tension, increases flexibility and range of motion, increases muscle elasticity, and this is perfect to, to do after intense training because the muscles tend to shorten after intense training, particularly weight training. Uh, and it can reduce injury and realign um, muscle fibers after injury. There are a few types of massage. Swedish massage, trigger point massage and deep tissue massage are some commonly used um, methods in sport. Moving on to tissue damage strategies. Now, cryotherapy is the main tissue damage. Now, cryo, uh, tissue, tissue damage strategy. Now, cryotherapy includes, uh, basically just means the use of ice uh, and low temperature to remove heat from a body part. It decreases pain and inflammation and promotes vasoconstriction, which was mentioned previously with um, contrast baths. Um, and this can help prevent the buildup of waste products. So when muscles are fatigued and, uh, and, and potentially injured, the vasoconstriction reduces the amount of, of uh, swelling and so on uh, to the area and can control that inflammatory response. Ice pack therapy um, is a, a good example, a nice easy way of applying cryotherapy to an injury or or to help someone recover. It's basically placing an ice pack onto an injured area or to an area that requires some, some recovery. Um, and it just works through the uh, vasoconstriction, vasodilation process, uh, reduces swelling, controls bleeding, and can reduce muscle spasms. Now, cryogenic chamber therapy is something, uh, is a strategy that is becoming more common, particularly for elite athletes. And it's where athletes are placed in a cryogenic chamber for a period of time with liquid nitrogen, which really rapidly cools the area. Now, the patient is obviously protected from this intense cool by wearing special gloves and socks, um, but it's designed to cool the body down rapidly. Um, and they'd stay inside there for about three minutes until core temp uh, body temperature is dropped. And... It, it gives the athlete some immediate pain relief uh, as well as triggering a release of endorphins. Cold water immersion is a common one used in elite sport and you'll see many times, particularly on the, the nightly news, particularly after a weekend of the football, you'll see athletes um, potentially in ice baths or in, in the surf to try to um, bring on this um, really cool temperatures onto the body to control swelling and to ensure that soreness, bruising and, uh, and pain is managed. So what it can lead to is the athlete can feel a lot better after it. Again, it's a pain-killing effect and it can really control that inflammatory response and encourage the healing of muscles after uh, intense training. Moving on to psychological strategies, following intense performances, athletes may experience um, low concentration and motivation, and they may be quite anxious, particularly after poor performance. So what this can do is, is it can have a detrimental impact on the athlete's ability to return to, to their performance or their next performance or the next training session. So psychological strategies are needed to be able to lift the athlete, give them some motivation and control their anxiety. So relaxation skills 
they definitely reduce tension and arousal. They can energize the athlete. And it may just mean reading a book, listening to music or watching television. Or it could be adopting a specialized uh, technique such as meditation, progressive muscle relaxation, visualization, breathing, uh, breathing techniques, positive self-talk and flotation. Um, and every athlete will be different and will try to use their very own relaxation skills. Now, meditation is a, is a fairly um, common one used by athletes, and it's just the athlete trying to relax and control their parasymp- parasympathetic uh, nervous system, which is responsible for calming. Uh, and this is done through just reducing noise, stimulation, and just totally calming down. Um, and it's, it's commonly used by athletes uh, to control stress after training or competition. Progressive muscle relaxation is another one that's used regularly by elite athletes. Uh, it can be done at the end of training. It can be done before bedtime. It involves tightening or um, contracting a range of muscles for a period of time and then relaxing them for a period of time. And what it does, it allows the athlete to develop a, a body awareness and then they're able to reduce their own tension and stress um, on their own without having to um, without having to to do it I guess with a whole team environment. They can actually do it automatically, independently on their own. Uh, and it has a, a really good impact on muscle tension, particularly reducing it. Imagery and visualisation is another strategy that could be used to help control uh, stress. Um, basically, we, we often think of imagery and visualisation in terms of improving performance and uh, an athlete visualising good performance, particularly when we're learning about psychology. But in this case, we're more learning about total relaxation. So the athlete would be thinking about an image that would that would comfort them and would totally relax them. Breathing exercises are also used by by athletes to calm down and used very frequently in martial arts. So breathing techniques can relax the entire body, um, and it can relax obviously muscles uh, as well as the mind. So you can see in the image there. That's a, an example of a, abdominal breathing, which is very common in uh, relaxation techniques such as Tai Chi and Qigong. Uh, and it, so the athlete breathes in and out, uh, and the stomach uh, or the or the abdomen. Uh, we see quite a lot of movement in the in the abdomen area, rather than breathing from the chest. It's a little bit deeper and lower uh, around the abdomen. Flotation tanks are another relaxation strategy and you can see, um, you can even imagine floating uh, in a weightless environment is going to um, provide an athlete with a stress-free environment. There may be music involved, there may also be, um, uh, or, or it may also be totally silent to to ensure the athlete is totally relaxed. So it's really effective for reducing stress, um, preventing an athlete from burning out after very stressful events or, or activities. For example, an athlete that's, that's just competed in uh, an Olympic program, for example, may adopt flotation tanks uh, at the end of the um, training season to help them to relax and calm down. And, of course, rest and sleep. Rest is essential and great for elite athletes. Um, they sh- elite athletes should be having at least one day per week as a non-training day, uh, and this allows for both physical and psychological recovery. And it also allows time for socialising and other interests. So adequate sleep, seven to nine hours is advisable, and it's probably along with cool down, probably one of the most important recovery strategies. The body needs to regenerate and restore during sleep um, and it allows that adaptation to training to occur so the muscles need rest to be able to grow 
uh, and experience hypertrophy. Uh, but on the other hand, too much sleep can be detrimental, uh, leading to sluggishness and lethargy. But really, who whoever says they get too much sleep? I can't think of anyone. Another one is debriefing. And debriefing is basically a conversation with a coach or trainer about an event. And it's about trying to overcome potentially negative performances. Um, it allows the athlete to achieve closure about a past performance. So if, if an athlete is trying to refocus themselves, forget a bad performance, they may have a debrief with their coach to help them to come to terms with potentially a bad performance and set goals for where they want to go in future. So it's a logical, rational discussion and it's removed from the hype and the emotion of, of performance or you know, the dressing room or the crowd and it's done just one-on-one -on -one with the coach. That brings us to the end of the presentation. Now, your learn two statement, research recovery strategies to discern their main features and propose benefits to performance. This is uh, a really important part of the syllabus in that you, you really have to go into depth with these recovery strategies and draw out what are the main features, okay, uh, and the benefits to performance. So an example is that cool down <clears throat> is very important uh, for ensuring that lactic acid in the muscle is recirculated. It ensures that uh, the muscles are, um, it, it reduces blood pooling uh, to the muscles straight after exercise. So it recirculates the blood as well and reduces delayed onset muscle soreness. All of this allows the athlete to be able to, A, return to training faster so that they can get back uh, to developing their skills and working with their teammates and also allows them to return to, the tra to, the, um, to competition faster as well and be performing at their best. So cool down is incredibly important for that purpose. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for listening.